Well, hello, hello, my beautiful people. My name is Gat, and welcome back to, you know what it is, Riddle Joker. Last time, you know, um, a lot of things happened. Satoru and Nanami were doing PDA. The friends were, you know, very suspicious because they're acting different. Then Nanami and Satoru, well, Nanami was disappointed in him because he wanted him to, you know, make an advance, you know, in a... <clears throat> sexual way and Satoru didn't because he didn't want to you know push it which you know most guys don't want to push it because you know they don't want to make the girl feel pressure and then like while Nanami was like ah, why didn't you do nothing so Suzaki chan was like hey let's talk for a bit and they talked in a bath where you know they're talking then they had a pajama party where it's like where Nanami reveals everything that, you know, uh, Satoru is not her blood brother. Um, they're adopted. They're dating. And right now, we're looking at Nanami's backstory. Wondering, how did she like Satoru? You know what I mean? And we're looking at her backstory where she was younger. Or maybe back then. You know what I mean? So, without further ado, let us continue. I usually don't like to recall my life before when I was adopted. Uh... uh. I don't have a single fond memory of those days. I was born in Astro, and my biological parents despised me because of it. They bickered furiously with each other day in and day out, shifting the blame onto the other for the fact that I was born in Astro. I hated it all, so I mostly stayed in my room and read books. I shut myself in there and secluded myself in my own world. I'm sorry, it's like... <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, this is my take two, because... This is like really <sighs> Well, first of all, my last last take I took, um, I didn't get any audio like, you know, my the music in the background. And two, it was really sad. Like I like almost cried. <laughs> I was like telling you telling um about like I secluded myself too, you know? But in my case it was video games. It wasn't like her situation where, you know, she had terrible parents, but me, it's like, I wanted to get away from East Los. Let's just say that. And the situation I was in at the time. Let's just say that. That's the only time I'm going to say it, because it wouldn't be fair. Because the last video, you know, I cried. <laughs> I literally cried halfway there. Because it was so sad, her story. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. Although the books I read weren't children books or anything close to it, only for the bare necessities will my parents ever spend money for me. I didn't care about the information in the books. Anything worked. As my biological father was a system engineer, I often immersed myself in the various programming textbooks he had lying around. One day, in an attempt to garner his favor, I decided to try and help him with his work. Somehow or another, it appeared that I had an ex exceptional talent for it. He was in awe upon seeing the work that I had produced. He was overjoyed. At first, it was only here and there. But before long, he began to shovel all of his work onto me. After that, it didn't take long till my parents grew unsatisfied with the pay from official work and began to crave more. That was when I developed my cracking skills. Even though I was just a child, I was fully aware of their intent. There was no love there. There... They only saw me as a means to make money. However, I had no place else to go, so I did as they instructed me. Eventually, I began to use my skills to dabble in illegal activities. Fortunately, however, I was caught before the worst of it happened. The one who caught me was a man by the name of Arhara Ryusuke, in other words, my current dad. I was an astro who possessed cracking skills and that couldn't let that couldn't be left unmonitored and was abused by her parents. For all those reasons, he decided to take me in. I accepted the offer without a hint of hesitation. I had long realized that my real parents didn't want me. You're gonna be happy to hear this. Our family has another member starting today. You got a little sister now, bud. No one told me about this. That's what I'm telling you now. Arha Anonymy will be her name. 
Isn't she cute? How did this happen just... How did this just happen overnight? Hmm. Well, it's complicated. But basically, she was in the situation much like your own. I felt I had to take her in. Sorry, I didn't talk to you about this beforehand. But you're gonna have... You're gonna have to forgive me for that. Mm. Are you mad at me? No. I knew you'd say that. You got a sharp tongue, but you're a kind of kid at heart. Shut up! You <laughs> Shut up! And get your sticky hands off my head! Don't be shy. I'm your father. Mm. Well, there you have it. This boy here is going to be your big brother from now on. Ask him for anything if you ever need help. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Fine. <clears throat> Sorry, I just woke up right now. Like, I was dead tired after work. You know what I mean? Uh, huh. Uh, hello. Back then, I didn't, I didn't take that words at face value. I was sure I'd end up being used to earn money again. That was why I never really spoke to Dad or Oni Chan. Instead, I shut myself in my room and resumed working using the connections I built up. After I got paid for my work, I gave the money to Dad as living expenses. <laughs> Just, like, I can't... Okay, I'm sorry. Like, uh... Like, take... Okay, I forgot to tell you. This is the second take I did... Well, I did the first take yesterday, and now in my second take, like, I'm looking at, at this now. It just looks so stupid. At first, I literally thought this was money. No, it's just, <laughs> it's just brown paper. <laughs> That's supposed to be like, this is money. <laughs> and look at her, it's like, here, here. Oh, good lord. I can't believe this. I was wondering what you've been doing in your room all day, but this is just... I saw he, the sight he was something I wasn't used to. My old parents always used to smile and happily take the money from me. D do you need more? Listen to what you're saying, kid. No, I don't need more. I don't need for money earned by a child. But isn't money required to live? Of course it is. But I'm nowhere near that enough. No, I'm nowhere near poor enough that I need to rely on your labor. You're a kid. You don't need to worry about living expenses or anything or any of that nonsense till you grow up. Actually, I'm the one who gives you money. Here, this is your allowance for this month. What's an allowance? Your parents never gave you an allowance? Ah, right. For I forgot. An allowance is basically spending money for you. You can use it to buy whatever you like. You'll be getting a monthly allowance from me from now on. And I'll increase it the more you get older. If there's anything you want that the allowance isn't enough to cover, come ask me. If I think it's something you ought to have, I'll give you a little extra to cover it. I ain't never had an allowance. Okay, sorry. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ramble. I rambled last time. <laughs> Literally, like this whole section could have took it like 20 minutes. I rambled for like almost an hour. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not gonna ramble. But I never had an allowance. What the fuck? Like, not gonna ramble. Not gonna ramble. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. So, no more lying about your age to do work. Are we clear? But, what am I supposed to do if I don't work? You don't have to do anything. Just be a kid. What does that mean? Go to school, learn, make friends, and have fun together. That's what kids do. I can't make friends. No need to worry about that. No one at the school you're going to will know that you're an astral. If you don't, if you still don't want to go to school, you don't have to. However, no more staying cooped up in your room. You'll be eating breakfast and dinner together with us. I want you to promise me that. What? I'm allowed to eat together with you? Of course you are. Man, I didn't think it was that bad. I'm sorry. No, you did nothing wrong. If anything, I should apologize to you for not being considerate enough. As I told you already, Satoru and I are your family now. Come, so come and eat with us, alright? 
Okay. In a way, that was when my life as Arihara Nanami first began. As was expected though, things were a bit awkward for a while. Sorry, didn't mean to run so late. You really are freaking late. Aren't you the one who suggested this crap in the first place? I'm really sorry. I know this doesn't excuse me, but here, check out what I got. Straight from the department store's food court. Tonight's gonna be a feast. Sorry I'm late, Nanami. It's fine. I'm used to it. Man, don't say that. You're gonna make me feel sad. Enough talking. Let's eat. So, Toto, you set the table. Fine. I... I... Oh, help! You don't have to. <clears throat> Damn, I'm gonna go back to the... <laughs> no, I just had it. Like, yesterday was such a pain, too. I was like, the whole time, like, what to do about his voice. Mother... <clears throat> I just had it, too. You don't have to. I can do it on my own. Oh, come on. Are you going to say that to your little sister? She just wants to help. <clears throat> yeah, and you don't need two people to put few plates on the table. That doesn't matter. As her brother, you say yes when she offers to help you. Um, yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. Seriously. If your little sister wants to help you, fuck it, man. Less work. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's bad I was saying that, like, I I see my little sisters as like, yeah, let's work, come on, let's go. <laughs> I would be like, without, without a doubt. But then again, they are adopted, okay? If you're gonna be mean to her, we'll just eat without you. How about that? What the heck? You're the one who said we have to eat together. Why don't I get any food? It's, puni it's punishment for a brother who's being nasty to his sister. I wasn't being mean to her. Uh, um, please don't fight. I'm sorry. We're not really fighting. Sorry to worry you. We should be the one apologizing, not you. Come on, you too. Why do I have to apologize? We got into this the fir in the first because you couldn't just be nice to her. Will you freaking listen to me? Don't you look at me with those puppy dog eyes. Look, fine, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fuck, I used to, I know I'm rambling, but I used to be such a, like my first sister, my first little sister, because I have like three older ones. But my first little sister, puppy dog eyes. She gets me every fucking time. But, um, but, uh, uh, sorry. But uh, my second sister, my uh, my last um, little sister, she tried to do puppy dog eyes. I'm like, nope, uh uh, like cause I know they're fake. Like I learned that they're fake. Like I could tell when you're fake crying and real crying. It's not that hard. I don't fucking give in to puppy dog eyes no more. Don't look at me with those puppy dog eyes. Look, fine. I'm sorry. If you want to help me, then let's get going. I don't even understand why you want to help me set the table. You're seriously weird. She has a name, you know. Did you forget it already? I know it's not a me. Of course I remember it. I'm not a freaking idiot. Let's go. <laughs> let's go take those plates to the table, not a me. <laughs> uh, okay. Dad often arrived home late because of work. However, I could clearly see he was making an effort to get us all together at the table for dinner every day. If I ever have kids, we're gonna have dinner. You know what I mean? Cause like, I never had dinner as a kid. What? You never had dinner? Well, shut up. Like, sat at a table. Like, I would mostly, um, you know, when you eat, you eat whenever, like, they'll set up. Like, even at my mom's, like, I didn't know, like, my mom's, I would eat at the table with them for dinner. When I would go see her. But for my dad, it's like, you eat whatever you want. Like, because my dad couldn't really cook, you know, dinner. Like, the only time we had is breakfast. But only when my dad was out, you know, there and not working. So, But for, like, dinner and all that, we would, like, okay, put in a hot pocket in the microwave. 
Dude, I live nothing on Hot Pockets, um, frozen pizzas, you know, the Celeste pizzas. Frozen pizzas, um, frozen burritos, and eggs. That was basically dinner. For, like, years. Even now, kind of. Well, until my dad got married to my stepmom, where it's like, he can make food, but it's like, you know, I can make my own food, too. So, I like, make my own dinner, too. But it's like, I'll never eat at the table. Like, I just bring it to my room. Or when um I was sharing a room with my brother, like, I'll just bring it to my desk. Like, I don't, you know, sit down and eat dinner. But I gotta do that. If I ever have kids, just sit down and eat dinner. Back then, Satoru was a lot more abrasive than he is now. Still, I could tell that he cared about me in this, in this sort of awkward way. Honestly, I honestly didn't know what to make of these two new people in my life. Dad has refused to take money from me. Why were they being so kind to someone who offered nothing to them in return? One day, I couldn't take it any longer, and I asked Dad the exact question. You can ask me all you want, but the answer is going to remain the same. I didn't adopt you to use you in any way. I adopted you because, well... Your eyes didn't strike me as an eyes of a child. And more suspic suspic and more suspic fine and more specific terms, they were emotionless. You know, Satoru used to be the same way. Well, he didn't have it as bad as you though. Kids like that are always distrustful of everything and everyone. They seal their true selves in a box and shut it tightly away. True. You know, that's how I'm gonna say it, true. Because of that, they know they don't know how to interact with other people. True. Sorry, I'm like ah. It's just East Los man. It just makes you kind of distrustful people. You kind of see shit sometimes, and you just like, gotta look the other way. Like, I remember there's these stairs that like I'll have to take to go home at my old place, right? And this was before Corona, so like this is really, really weird. There's a guy sitting on the on the steps, right? Another guy was coming down slowly with a bandana on. And I just noped the other way. I went back and I went to the store. And I it was like a grocery store. Like um Food for Less or something like that. I'm not gonna give you the specific name, but like that, you know what I mean? So I just went in there and just walked around for a bit. I came back and there was nothing there. There was no one there. So I'm like, okay, nothing bad happened. There's a little blood, but no one dead. So cool. <laughs> but um, I didn't know how to interact with people. I was mostly a loner. <laughs> no, okay, let me say this. Because I didn't have friends, but I was an introvert who got adopted by a bunch of extroverts. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to get into a whole discussion about that. <clears throat> I know how it is like firsthand. Back when I was younger, I was one of those kids myself. So, I know one of those kids when I spot them. I know better than anyone else what happens if they don't get the help they need. So, can I just avert my eyes knowing full well the eventual outcome? All, all the more so when it comes to... <laughs> when it's a young child like you. Human beings live by supporting one another. And like I just said, I used to be the same as you two. What allows me to change was the fact that I had a person in my life who helped me change. I owe that person a lifetime of gratitude. <laughs> Damn it, I still want to talk. Like, like, I'm going to ramble, okay? This is going to be, <laughs> I'm going to ramble, okay? But, um, I don't know what it is. I was introvert right like always in my room always away playing video games and getting stuck right there and when i did have friends right like i think it's like those friends that changed me a little bit middle school i was yeah i was getting there getting warmed up high school i was fucking wild but i still kept my feelings on the inside like, you know, like, I didn't really share that I like anime, I didn't really share, you know, I like RPGs, like Mass Effect and all that. I would always like, like, like oh, I play Call of Duty. Like, I had it, but I wasn't any good. But, um, I don't know what it is. I think 
what changed me is, well, for a fact, I got older, so I stopped giving a fuck. And two, like, YouTube videos, like, like, seriously, I would never talk. Like, my friends would always, like, like, I would have friends. I will be in a group of extroverts, and everyone was talking to themselves about everything, and I would just be there listening, quiet the whole time, only speaking, you know, when they spoke to me. And I would only say, like, a sentence at a time. So, what really changed me, you know, talking was <laughs> fucking a Thenreal Enigma episode one. Just watch that video. Like, it has a thousand, so you probably watched it, but I was kind of awkward a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I think I was, like, really quiet. Um, I didn't really know what to say, so I just basically read the whole time. Uh, I don't really remember. I gotta watch the video again, but I was so different than what, you know, right now it is. Like, right now, I'm just... I'm just fucking yeah, you know? Uh, and I'm talking more. Like, shit, man, I'm talking way more than I used to as a kid. Hell, way more used to than 2019. Like, seriously, I started in 2020, early 2020. 2019, I didn't really speak. Like, I'm speaking now. I speak to my coworkers. Well, I warmed up to them. Which, you know, I could be a little bit weird. But I think it's mostly these videos that, you know, help me talk. <sighs> you guys changed me. The few that is very, the, the, the own, like, what is it, 10 views or something? You 10 viewers are the one who changed me. <laughs> okay. Owe oh, that person a lifetime of gratitude. I want to do for you what that person did for me. That was my initial motivation, at least, but it changed a little. I love you too, and enjoy having you as my family. The thought of working for my son and daughter also motivates me to work hard at my job. I'll treat I'm treating you nicely because that's how families treat one another. It's normal. You're already an irre irreplaceable part of my family. Satoru as well, of course. Not making much sense to you, huh? Well, that's understandable. I just hope that one day you look back on this conversation and know what I was talking about. To be honest, I wasn't able to understand his words at the time. What I did more or less take away from it was the supporting each other part. I needed to support dad in a non-financial way. After arriving to that conclusion, I used my own money to buy ingredients and begin to learn how to cook. After looking up various recipes online, I decided I decided to start out with salted grilled horse mackerel with beef and potato stew for my first attempt. In addition, I made rice and miso soup. Needless to say, it was a contrastic fa uh, fa failure. I'm not, I cook too. Let me tell you something. If you're learning to cook, you're gonna fail. Don't let that discourage you. You're gonna mess up. Something's gonna burn. You undercooked it. Or something about it just tastes off. Either because you put too much seasoning or not enough seasoning. Or you messed up and it looks mangled as fuck. You're gonna mess up, okay? But don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. I messed up so many, so many cooking things. Ah! <laughs> so many. I messed up so many, but it's gonna be fine, okay? The rice was mussy, the miso soup tasteless, the fish burnt, and the stew was a putrid, unappealing smell. Yeah, what was the first thing you made? Oh, I made steaks. The first thing I made was steaks, um, and spaghetti. I undercooked the spaghetti, and the steaks, not enough seasoning. And I think I, because my dad likes things well done, right? Which, after learning, getting older, steaks are supposed to taste really good. Well done. If you're eating well done, I don't hate you. It's just... Yeah, but I think I, I made it too well done, which it was well done close to burnt, you know what I mean? So it was not good at all, and under season, so <laughs> it was not good at all. The rice was mushy, the miso soup tasteless, the first bin burnt, and the stew had a putrid, unappealing, up, unappetizing smell. I'm sorry. 
wasn't this your first cookie time cooking? Come on, don't beat yourself up over it. I'm just happy that you decided to cook for me. Actually, it's impressive enough that you are that you were able to cook it all this in the first place. All of this in the first place. You're amazing, Nanami Chan. Yuck. Mm, mm. I'm sorry. Satoru, you need to watch what you say, boy. Why? It tastes like crap. Mm, mm. This is awful. If it's so bad, then why are you eating it? There's nothing else to eat. And she tried hard, really hard on it. So I don't want to throw it away. Just because it's crap doesn't mean I can't eat it. I'm just giving my opinion. I'm sorry, like, um... Don't... Yeah. Um, because I'm that way too, but different. If I make something and it's bad, I eat the... F my dad would throw it away because he does not care. Right? Because I spend my own money on it. He does not care. But I'll eat it because I spent, well, one time and two, money buying the crab. So, like, I eat the, I eat it. I have to eat it. Even if, I made fried chicken, I undercooked it, and I got so sick. Because you can't eat undercooked chicken. I'm sorry, you can't. I tried making fried chicken under, and I undercooked it. And I had such a bad time. Diarrhea, stomach was hurting. Oh man, it was it was really bad. I'm just giving my opinion. You know, I had a hunch for a while. Wait, did I even read it? Yeah, I didn't read it. You know, I had a hunch for a while now, but you really are a sundere. Shut up! I have to eat it, otherwise you get mad at me and accuse me of being a bad brother. You bet, I'll punch you in the face too. That's trial mistreatment! You know some big words, do you now? <laughs> Get your hand off my head! Dang it! Mm. And as for you, Nanami. I'm sorry. I won't do it again. No, no. If you want to cook, then go for it. However, stop using your own money for it. I'll pay for any of the anything house, housework related. You got that? I can try again. Of course. Bye. Mm. Don't worry about Satoru. He's just a sundere. Stop calling me that. I couldn't find any other job I could do, so I settled on housework. At first, it was a string of failures, both for kit cooking, cleaning, and laundry. How do you mess up laundry? Mmm. Well, okay. I think I know how you mess it up. Um, you know, putting like a red shirt with the white shirts. Maybe. Maybe. But I don't know how you mess with cooking. No, not, not cooking. Laundry. I've been doing it since I was, I want to say six. Like, not just my own. Like, whatever was in the hamper at the time. Like, like my dad's and my brother's. I would, you know, I would fucking wash everything. Not all the time, but like, I knew how to wash as a kid. Like, it's not hard. Alright, anyway. But for cooking and cleaning and laundry. Every time I mess up, I feel awful. But Satoru-kun was always there to make things better. Every time I cook, he always cleaned his plate despite saying how bad it was. When a cup would slip out of my hand and shatter, he would make sure I was unhurt and clean up the bits of broken glass for me. When I would accidentally wash clothes along with tissues, who the fuck? <laughs> Okay, who the fuck uses tissues? They don't look the same. They don't come in the same box. He would tell me I just had to rinse the clothes with fabric softener more, more, one more time. Hey, hey, Wh what? You're gonna go out shopping for dinner, yeah? I'll come along. Dad told me not to get, not to let you go alone. And besides. You probably can't carry everything by yourself. I'm sorry. Why do you keep apologizing all the time? Well, actually, I kind of need you... I need to, um, tell you something. Th thanks. Huh? Your cooking's kind of pretty good lately, so thanks. Mm hmm. Let's go already, Nanami. 
His words were abu- abu- abused and abrasive as always. But he held his, his hand out to me, called me by my name, and waited for me. Mm-hmm. So I must give up my courage and took his hand. Mm. Take it back now. That might have been the first time I ever held hands with anyone. The touch and warmth of his skin was surprisingly so it was surprising and bewildering, and at the same time, also very comforting. So, what are we gonna get first? What are we gonna have for dinner anyways? I, I haven't decided yet. His grip of the hand was tight, so that we wouldn't get separated. In all of my life, no one has ever given me that warmth. It was such a nice feeling, but I didn't know why. What? You're an Ari Howard too! Uh, oh, right! My name is Sa. <laughs> My name is Sa Satoru! Come on! <laughs> Come on! I I'm sorry! Sa Satoru kun! <laughs> why, do why do you sound so insecure? Well, whatever. So, what is it? Is there anything specific you'd like to eat? Well,. I don't care as long as it's good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't get all teared on on me. Didn't I tell you I thought your cooking was pretty good? So just go with something you already know how to make. What did you like? Uh, your curry, I guess. I'll make curry then. From that day forward, I began to work extra hard in order to place the Totokun. I gave my all at cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Earning his praise felt good and gave me the motivation to strive harder. That was something I never experienced in my previous life. This was when I began to tie it all back to things Dad had told me. At my previous home, I lived with my mother and father, who were my blood parents. But they didn't regard me as family, which is fucked up. I know I'm cursing a lot, but... Come on, who does that to a child? Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't have a good upbringing. But you know what I had? I had a mom who loved me, even though she divorced my dad and was far away. I had a mom who loved me, and a dad who cared. And tried his best to, you know, make a life for me and my brother. He used to work all the time, before he was a school bus driver. I never really saw my dad. And when my dad was home, he was mostly asleep, you know? Like, I had parents who cared about us. Like, and at the time, I didn't, I didn't care, okay? I felt bad. I didn't care, because I was a kid. And, like, I just wanted what other kids had that I didn't. Like, I watched, you know, whatever on TV, and these kids in the white neighborhoods would have better shit than me. And I'm like, why, you know? And, like, sometimes my friends, too, like, the iPhone and all that. I didn't get a phone to like, high school. You know what I mean? And, like, I kind of helped out a little bit with money I've been saving up. And my dad's like, uh, it's about time you had a phone, you know? They put us on a phone plan and everything. Because <sighs> it was making a little bit more money, you know? <sighs> okay, I, I'm just... <sighs> it, it just irks me every time in games and in movies. Like, now. Where it's like, if a family doesn't care for their child, it just... You know what I mean? I, it's like, it pains me a little bit. But at my new home, I live with two people who I bear no blood relations to. But they consider me family. I want them to be my family. I wanted to be a daughter, a sister, not some tool to earn money. Little by little, I begin to willingly show my, my true feelings instead of meekly obeying their every word. I was scared of opening up my heart to others. Don't be. If they care, they'll care, you know what I mean? What if they don't like who I am? They might hate me if I say no to them. Don't ever think this. Those thoughts tormented me, and it was hard for me to hold a proper conversation with them because of it. But I didn't want to give up. The wish, the wish to form a true family bond weighed out the fear. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. There were times when I cried, and sometimes when we argued and fought. I still believe that I caused both Dad and oni a heck of a lot of trouble back then. But no matter what, they've always loved me as their daughter, 
and, I res and sister respectively. That love was something I never got it from my real family. And overcoming those trials and tribulations, the sum of everything we were cultivated, all the experiences and tr feelings we shared eventually bore fruit, and we became a true family. That was also when I realized that I was in love with Satoru Kukun. In the process of becoming families, these feeling of minds must have grown past that into something more. And now, our relationship has undergone a drastic change, from brother and sister to boyfriend and girlfriend. This might very well result in the destructive, the destruction of everything we worked so hard to cultivate, which is why I locked these feelings deep within my heart for the longest of times. But I know, even I had, even if I had not confessed, our relationship would have gotten in the same direction eventually. Okay, let me drink some water. I'm sorry, it's just ugh, my mouth. gonna end it there Why, it, we're not even at the 40 minute halfway point no i'm gonna end it there because it's a good place to end it and you know i'm just gonna get really emotional like at least i'm not crying i'm you know i'm just ah <laughs> fuck her family and like i don't know something about her past just really connects with me like in a personal level I'm not going to ramble too, too much about that. You'll find out whenever I start streaming. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think about streaming like in two or three weeks. Like, I just want to start streaming and like get to talk to you guys. So stay in tune for that, you know, whenever I do make a stream. What will you stream again? I don't know. Maybe we'll just talk for a bit. Or, hmm. Wait, no, never mind. I was gonna say, like, we'll just fuck around with Pro Tools. Like, I got these songs that, um, that the program gives me, right? Just to fuck around with and, like, you know, adjust the levels and everything. And I was like, maybe we'll just do, like, I'll show you what it, what it is to be a student of an audio engineer. <laughs> uh, no, that sounds, that makes it sound like my dad's an audio engineer. No, like a, a guy learning to be an audio engineer, you know? But I'm thinking no, because they might be copyrighted, and I don't want to... You, you know what I mean? The moment I get on Steam, it's like, DMCA strike. Bam! <laughs> like, fuck! <laughs> I don't know. I can double check if these are, you know, not... Like, if they're not, like, gonna give me a strike, because, you know what I mean? Anyway. Anyway! If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification to see whenever I post... And leave a comment. Ooh, you know what I should stream? Because I got a better mic. I got, ah, uh, this model. <laughs> stream a 10 year Enigma again. You know, play it again. <laughs> Maybe. 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 <laughs> oh, shit. You know what I just realized? I never made that review. Like, for my third channel. 
I was gonna make a, a review for a Thunder Enigma. Like I have a script and everything. Mm, I got ideas to do, ah, and I'm gonna make music again once I figure out how I'm gonna do it. Like, cause I gotta, you know, like should I um should I use this condenser mic, a dynamic mic? Like, how am I gonna do it? Am I gonna do it on Audacity like I always do, or should I use Pro Tools because I'm a student and I got it for free? I don't know. But anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification. Alrighty, this is Gat saying farewell, and as always, bye-bye!